the school of aquaponics. So I come outside this morning, hit the corner, come around to the, uh, the hoop house, and I don't hear the buzzing noise. There's usually a buzzing noise that I hear that lets me know that one, the pump is running, and two, the aeration, uh, the, um, the aerator is running. I come around the corner, I hear nothing, absolutely zero. So I say, okay, let me come in here and check. Come in here and check just to see what's going on. No pump, no nothing. I say, okay, come over here to the breaker, and the breaker is, um, the breaker's popped. So I fix that, boom, fix the, uh, fix the breaker, come back in, come back in, say, you know, it's no big deal, probably just went off, probably just went off um, maybe an hour ago or two hours ago, because I just came out here last night. I came out here last night, probably around 12 o'clock, checked, everything was running, boom, come out this morning, everything's silent. So then I come over here and I say, oh, hold on, what's going on here? Boom, so I say, okay, you know, maybe it's no big deal. Maybe it's no big deal. Let me just come down here and check on the other fish, the bigger fish. Um, and most likely they'll be doing all right. It's, it, a few hours without oxygen is really not no problem um, for tilapia. So then I open up, I open up, I'm, I don't even wanna open it up right now, but I open up the tank shade cloth and I see nothing but slumpage. Nothing but slumpage. I couldn't believe my mind. I could not believe my mind. I couldn't believe my mind. I thought it would at least be at least one tilapia left. Zero tilapia. That means it's probably because it was super hot last night and the dissolved oxygen depleted super rapidly while there was nothing being supplied to it. So they depleted that very rapidly and then they end up biting the dust. It must have been, it must have been pretty hectic last night if all the tilapia died, because usually there's like one sur one survivor, or if something happens, if it cuts off for a few hours, it's usually not that big of a deal. But when you start getting densities higher, because this is start, this, the density in here was starting to get pretty pretty high. Um, they still had a few more, um, probably about two more months to grow in here, but it was still significant enough to cause problems in this tank. But I can't believe it, man. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, man. This is the second time this has happened to me. The second time I've had a, like a, a, a good size fish death. So now I'm going to have to pretty much start from ground zero. I didn't even check this tank here. This, I haven't even opened the tank. I already know there's death. There's, uh, there's nothing but death in there. I can already guarantee it. All death up in there. So I guess we'll just open it up together because I haven't even checked it. All I, when I, so, as soon as I looked at the big fish, I'm like, you know what, that's it. Nobody made it then. If the small fish didn't make it, the big fish didn't make it, the medium fish, they sure didn't make it. Let's just, woo! Oh, I see a few of them, hold on. Ah, this one doesn't have as many deaths. Hold on. So we have about two deaths in here. I think there's more, one, two. Okay, only two of them died. Only two of them died. Two of them died in here. So I still have about 18, 19 in here. 18 or 19 of them left in here. But that's not gonna pretty much do me anything. So I'm gonna have to start, I'm gonna have to start all the way from scratch, man. So from here, oh man, I can't believe it, man. I really can't believe it, man. Like I really, I really can't believe it. I really can't believe it, man. Man. Sad day in aquaponics paradise, man.
get ready to bury the dead and allow them to move on pass on to the afterlife that's just what happens the way it goes man man i hate that these fish died man i'm telling you right now Woo. hate that they died Go ahead and send these guys on their way, because that's it. Ain't no coming back from that. Dude, this is something bigger than a possum, man. This thing dragged this whole bucket, and this is this is a heavy bucket. It, oh, it must have been the bear, the legendary bear. I'm, I'm gonna have to tell you guys about the story about the bear, but there's no way that a possum drug this. This is heavy. There's no way a possum drug this all the way out of here or out of the um the hoop house and brought it all the way out here. There's no way. There's no way. Dude, man, I don't know what's going on right now, man. I've been having a bad week, man. I haven't had a bad week like this in aquaponics and man, it's been a lot some years, some years since I've had a bad week like this. This is crazy. So something dragged it out. I'm pretty sure it's a bear because my neighbors keep telling me about, well, I know about the bear. I'll tell you guys about the bear on a different um, episode, but I'm pretty sure it had to have been a bear that came through and did this because this thing is way too heavy for any small type of animal to get a hold of it and just drag it out here. So, man, it's just a crazy day today, man. It's a crazy day. All right, so this is the next day. So we're coming back in here. I want to show you guys um, just the hardiness of the tilapia. We know that they got that they end up dying um, yesterday, but like I was saying, I say I usually say there's always one or two left. There's always some tilapia left in like these massive tragic incidences. Um, so I couldn't see yesterday. I thought all of them were dead yesterday, but when I let the um, the water continue recycling and it cleaned up and it, it, it kind of cleared up the murkiness, then what I found out when I came back out this morning, I found out, oh, snaps, we got three tilapia left. So I'm gonna show you guys that there's still some left. Um, let me see if we can get a good look in here. I'm gonna have to bring it up pretty close so it, cause it has a glare, but this is the same tank. You can see there's one, two, three. There's the other one right there. So these guys are still alive here. I came back, came back the next, um, this morning, and these guys are still in there hanging out. So this just shows, you know, it just pretty much shows like the hardiness of tilapia. Like this is why these are like the, the, the most cultured fish on the planet because of traits like this. They're able to survive. You always, you, you know, they're, they're really hardy and it's, it takes a lot to pretty much to, um, to kill them. So that's why I know that it must have been a long time that they had without oxygen because like an hour, you know, um, at that density that they were at, an hour wouldn't be a problem. Two hours, maybe not a problem, but like eight hours and stuff like that, then, you know, that, that's more likely going to put, send uh, the tilapia to the afterlife. So, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, it's a, a once again, a learning lesson, um, a lesson to be learned and, you know, and we'll figure out a way to prevent that I know how to prevent it but it's just that you know it's such a rare occasion that something like that happens it's never happened here usually when the power goes out it's usually for like an hour and that's it since I've been here for four years it's been no longer than that so this one well actually the power didn't even go out it was the breaker that trips whatever made the breaker trip so that's not something that I really could have controlled but I could have some extra things in place just in case something like that happened it wasn't the power that went out it was the breaker that tripped so you're also probably wondering where the heck are the plants at? I took the other ones out yesterday. The majority of them died. They mostly wilted at night because it was just way too hot. Um, and, but there's some of them that, that, that survived. So I kind of kept those in here. And um, now I'm not going to be able to be running at full capacity right now. So I still have some seedlings that are ready. But for the most part, it's just that the most of them died. So there's still some of the cups. I took them mostly out. 
and just toss them. Um, when they're usually when they start wilting like that, and they have they wilted pretty bad, so um, just took them out, and I'll just keep growing the other ones that I have. But I won't be able to grow as much for the time being, but we'll eventually catch back up. So let's go over here. I have my little seedlings over here. Show you guys that real quick. So these are like the have some seedlings here. These will be going back in there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So you know we're gonna put some some more um safety precautions, take some more safety precautions in here, um, just to prevent that from happening um any other time. So, you know, it is what it is. Can't do anything else about it. All right, so in the beginning of this, um, in the video clips, you're probably going to notice that the audio is kind of uh, iffy and it's all messed up. So I had to go ahead and invest in another camera or another um, audio, um, another voice recorder, microphone, whatever the heck it's called, you know, um, went ahead and bought another one, uh, replaced it because the other one that I was using is not really suitable for the outside vlogging, all the movements, the camera, the cord in the back is a little bit loose, so it keeps cutting in and out. And that was uh, really irritating when I'm going back looking at some of the footage. So got another one. So we won't have that problem the next time and everything will be uh, pretty much smooth. So, you know, um, hopefully everyone has got a chance to look at some of the realities of aquaponics that you've learned um, and taken some, you know, taking a lesson out of what you've just seen and witnessed about the fish deaths. Because what I can tell you is you do aquaponics long enough, you will experience this. You will experience it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you guys and tell you that, make it seem like this is, I'm not going to do that. Like it's the easiest thing. Like, you know, everyone else is, a lot of people, a lot of people are passing, passing off. Like this is just the easiest thing in the world. It's not. I told you before, this is a thinking man's game. It's not a physical man's game. This is a thinking man's game. And stuff like this, little, you have to be a, you have to be a strategist. You have to be strategizing. And you have to, you know, you have to be playing, playing your cards right. Little things like this, little small insignificant things you would think would be insignificant cause big catastrophic problems and have large impacts on an aquaponic system. And you can imagine if this was on a large scale, something as small as like a breaker tripping over it, maybe it's a wire or just a bad, um, maybe the circuit breaker itself is bad, um, you know, and, and that could cause a lot of problems, a lot of problems. This is the second time that I've lost, I had like a mass, well, this is, I wouldn't really consider this a massive fish death, but it is massive in, um, in, in, compa in reference to the, the size of the system. It is a massive one, but I've had a larger one when I had my larger tanks. Um, I had a way bigger fish death than this um, when I had my fish die from a cold snap that came through. Just a surprise cold snap, 32 degrees, boom, all tilapia bellied up when I came outside the next morning. And, you know, it's always, this is tilapia we're dealing with, so it's always a few of them that are left. Maybe about four or five of them out of maybe a thousand fish that, I, that were in that one particular tank. So it's going to happen. The question is, when is it going to happen? That's really pretty much the question. You do it long enough, it's going to happen. This right here, this took six years. Six years, I had never had any problem like this. Nothing even close to anything like this. And boom, all of a sudden, here's the birthday cake. Here you go with the candles, nice icing and everything. Nice German chocolate cake. Here you go. Here's your present. Boom. All your fish are gone. All the fish are gone. Um, so, you know, that, that's just something that I want to make people aware of. Um, so you'll, so it won't be a big deal, you know, as big of a deal. You'll understand that, you, you know, it's not really you doing something wrong. It's just part of the game. It's just part of the game. And it, we won't really want to prevent it or prolong it the best that we can. Um, but, you know, you do it long enough. It's just, it's just part of the game. So... Hopefully everyone has learned something from it, but that's another reason why I talk about in other videos about if you're not really going to be serious about fish production, cut out the fish production altogether and just do hydroponics. Just do hydroponics. It save you the headache. It save you the headache of, of having because you have to be involved when you're doing aquaponics. You got to be involved in your system. You have to be you have to be active with the system. It's not just leave it out there and just let it do whatever it has to do. You have to be out there daily checks, daily checks. You know, multiple times a day. Usually, I go out. I'll go out at twelve o'clock just to do an extra check. You know, whenever I'm here, I'll do a. I'll go out and do an extra check. No problem. Go out with my flashlight. Boom. Check it out. Make sure I hear the regenerator. Uh, regenerator blower going. I make sure I, um, the pump is still running. Everything is going. 
just a, just you know just a just a check um because anytime anything can go wrong but i've never had really never had any problems other than this time and another time before so you guys just happen to see it i just happened to start you know recording these videos when it happened so it's pretty interesting but um like i said yeah it'll save you a big headache save you a, a lot of trouble with the production you know, but if you're going to be serious with the fish production as well, then I'll definitely, it's a definitely rewarding to get involved in. It's very rewarding to be able to raise the fish and plants together and kind of have them both grow to maturity. It's definitely rewarding and it's, um, you know, it's uh, kind of therapeutic as well. So, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But I, I enjoy both of them pretty much equally, the fish and the plants. I'm not just doing, oh, here's the fish here, yeah, yeah, they're there, but have all the plants that I'm really catering to. It's both of them. So hopefully that gives you guys a little insight. Some of you guys who haven't done it, I know some of you guys who have been doing it for a while, you guys already know. You guys have either had close calls or you have already had some deaths. And, you know, if you've been doing it for a while, like I said, it's coming. It's, it's creeping around the corner. You know, it'll be, you, it'll be 20 years you're doing it, and it just happened on the 20, the 20 years, the day after, that's when you have your big fish, uh, fish kill, you know, and it, you know, it's just the way it is, but it's not a, it's not an issue. So it took me about a day, you know, look, reflected on it for about a day, you know, a little, I was a little tight, you know, I lost, you know, some, some fish went to the afterlife. So I was a little tight, but you know, I'm over it now. It's whatever. I just keep moving on forward and it's easy to build back up. There's plenty of tilapia. It's not like these the last tilapia on earth. So, you know, I'll get my other tilapia and keep it moving. Um, and that'll just be it for that. So, um, enough with that. Tomorrow, what I got going on, I'm going to pick up my guy, one of my good friends, Carlos. The first guy, the first system I ever built was with him. It was uh, in 2011 when I was in the Marine Corps. We, we were both in the Marine Corps. We built the first aquaponic system. He's coming in tomorrow. He's coming in from California. So I'm going to go pick him up, and I'll bring you guys along on a few things. Um, whatever we go out to do or whatever, I'll uh, probably show you guys a few things. Um and um, sit down and let you introduce you guys to him. Really good guy. So I'm really looking forward to my guy Carlos coming tomorrow. And um, that's pretty much about it. So right now it is 11, almost 11.30. So probably from 11.30 to about 12, finish editing up these videos, um, get it published. Um, and then from about 12 to 1, probably do about an hour's worth of reading. And then from 1 to about 1.30, correct my mind. I'm going to get my mind corrected. Um, and then from anywhere from 1.30 to 2, I end up falling asleep. If, you know, that's the plan. You know, it can always go whatever. Just depend. Right now, I'm not tired. I still got a lot of energy right now. Yeah, I got energy right now. Right now, I'm fine. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I can stay up to like 4. But, you know, that, that's, not, that's not the case. I needed to go get some sleep because my daughter's here. When she wake up, 8 o'clock, woo, she'd be ready to go. She's ready to go. It's like, woo, man. You don't want to be caught sleep, getting only 3 hours of sleep you know, with her, because man, you're going to be super exhausted. So I'm about to go ahead and handle that. I'm going to end this vlog right now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the vlog and I will talk to you guys on the next one.